Hi, I'm Cooper for Rack Robotics, and today we're continuing our series on assembling your Wire EDM starter kit. In today's video, we're going to cover final assembly of your Wire EDM machine. So we'll start by taking our screws, and we can install those one at a time into the holes that are on the vat itself. From here, we'll take the vat and we'll position it over the bed of the machine. We'll then take our springs and we'll install them over the screws and find the first mounting hole. Once you've found the first mounting hole, it's easy enough to locate the other screws with their springs over those mounting holes. What I like to do is I'll keep the bed preloaded on the springs that I already have installed, whether it's the front one or the side two, and then I'll lift up the side of the bat and place the spring over first. Then I can retain the spring position with the fastener and find the next mounting hole. And from here, we can install the wheels. And for the back two wheels, I like to pull the vat to the rearward position. That way it's easier to access those springs and screws. We can leave the wheels just snug for now. You might find them useful for leveling your workpiece during the wire EDM process. Before moving on to installation of the tool, we'll make sure that our Wagos are installed into the vat, right here into the Wago bus. Just like the other Wago positions, these will snap into place. Now we're ready to install the tool. Moving on to the installation of the tool, there's only three fasteners to look out for. The stock wire tool only has three holes for fasteners, and those are meant to mate with the mounting holes here on the motion plate for the Ender 3. Pay close attention to the mounting bosses here on the Ender 3. These made up with the larger holes here on the back of the tool. So for installation, we can push our vat forward, place the wire tool into the vat, and move everything back, and then press the wire tool onto the mounting plate, like so. We'll then take our fasteners and install those here into the holes on the mounting plate. The fasteners required for this part are the same ones that came with the Ender 3, so you won't need any additional hardware. Now that we've finished the installation of the tool, we can move on to final wiring and test cuts. When it comes to finishing the wiring for your desktop wire EDM machine, there's a couple parts that we've included and a couple parts that we haven't. We've done this because we know certain things about your setup and there's other things that we can't determine. For instance, the length of the motor wires required or how exactly you choose to enable the power core. Fabricating the wires for the rest of the machine that aren't included with the kit is pretty easy, so don't worry. Today, we're gonna start with the wires we know you're gonna have. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wire that comes off of the cathode from the wire tool. This will strip like the other wires to 11 millimeters for the Wagos. And then we'll install it over here into the Wago bus. We've chosen to connect the wire directly from the wire tool to the Wago bus to reduce EMI of our system. But you have the option of running the wire all the way up the top here and using one of these connectors. Next, we'll move on to the power output cable from the power core. This is an eight conductor cable. We've twisted the wires here to reduce the EMI of the system. This connector can get plugged into the front of the power core here. And these cables will then get stripped to 11 millimeters and installed over into the Wago bank. It can help if you want to untwist them slightly in order to give yourself a little bit more room to work. and we'll continue this stripping process for all of the wires here. Now that these wires have been stripped, we can install them into the Wago bank on the side of the machine. Here on the Wago bank, you can see there's two Wago sets. One is for our cathode wires, and the other one is for our anode wires. We're gonna make sure all of the red or orange wires make it into the anode side, and all of the black wires make it into the cathode side. Now that the wires have been installed into the Wago bank, we can secure this bundle with a zip tie in the provided recess in the vat. And 
before I sniff off the excess, I like to use a pair of pliers to make sure that the zip tie is tightly secured. Now we can select and connect our anode wire. For our purposes today, we're going to be using an alligator clip that I just cut the other end off of. This is one of the parts you're either going to have to self-source or make yourself. Using something simple like an alligator clip is a good option. You get good electrical contact and it's easy enough to install. Or you could use something like a ring terminal if you really want to make sure that you have very good electrical contact to your workpiece. So what we'll do here is we're going to strip this wire to 11 millimeters just like the other Wagos. And we can install it here in the last position of the Wago bus. Now that we have all of our Wago positions filled, we're going to lock down the anode and the cathode wires. We'll do this again with some zip ties. We just use these small zip ties in our process. Now we'll be moving on to wiring the enable cable that came with the kit and to wiring the motor. For our setup today, I'm gonna to be wiring both of these into the Ender 3 main board, but you don't have to do that. You could use any 24 volt supply to power the motor itself and anything between five and 24 volts for the enable port on the power core. Moving on to the more custom wiring for the setup, I'm going to start with our enable cable. First, I'm going to strip the ends of the enable cable to 11 millimeters, that way, I can connect them to a longer cable with these two Wagos. Then I'm going to make a wire with this 18 gauge zip wire here. And then we'll connect that into the ender. When selecting the length of this wire, I normally go a little bit over what I think I'm gonna need. It doesn't hurt to have this cable a little bit longer than we need it. Now when installing these, it helps to make sure that you keep the color consistent throughout the chain. So I'm gonna go to this red line here and connect it into the Wago. And we'll do the same for the black line. On the other end of this cable, I'm gonna split these apart and I'll strip them just a few millimeters. That way, I can crimp the end with some ferrules here and a ferrule crimping tool. This is just for safety as we install these wires into screw terminals inside of the Ender mainboard. Now that we've prepared this cable, we can install it into the enable port on the front of the power core. That's the one marked EN right here. The next cable we're gonna make is for the motor. The motor connects here to this Wago bus, so we only need one end that actually has terminals on it. Again, we can make this longer than we think we're gonna need. So with these crimped, we're just gonna move on to this side of the cable. And we'll strip these to 11 millimeters for the Wagos. We can now install the motor wire into the Wago bus here on the tool. Make sure we match up those colors and everything should be all right. The remaining wires can now be installed into the motherboard of the Ender 3. And I'll get you guys a close up of that. Opening up the Ender 3, you can see we've made some changes to the wiring. Here we have the spool motor connected into the bed heater of the Ender 3, and then we have the power cores enable connected into the hot end heater of the Ender 3. These are both 24 volts with relatively high current limits, so they should work for everything we need. I specifically chose the bed port for the spool motor on the wire tool because the spool motor itself can draw up to an amp, and I wanted to have enough overhead for that. But the enable port for the power core can actually be plugged into here. This is the part cooling fan on the hot end. This is also 24 volts and has a relatively lower power. Since it's just a signal to turn on and off the power core's cutting feature, this will also work. It's a pretty flexible system, and you can put between 5 and 36 volts into the power core's enable port to make it work. It just depends on what kind of system you're running and what you find appropriate for your needs. Now that we've completed onboard wiring of the power core and wire tool, we can move on to getting ready for test cuts. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out at the Discord link below. Our team and many others are there and we're ready to help you troubleshoot.